So one of the things that we talk about uh, when we talk about breast disease is we get we concentrate on the malignant breast disease or breast cancer. Uh, sometimes there are benign breast conditions that patients are concerned about, uh, but many of their physicians say, well, it's not breast cancer, so um, good for you and you don't have to worry about it. Some of the things that I take care of, I'm a comprehensive breast surgeon. I did a fellowship in cosmetic surgery and I'm board certified in both general surgery and cosmetic surgery. So um, if, a, if a woman comes to me with a breast complaint, I can take care of it. So. Uh, some of the things that I see uh, that I take care of, um, we'll concentrate on a few. Um, they're called macromastia and micromastia. Uh, macromastia is basically just having very, very large breasts that actually causes a medical condition where you have um, back pain, neck pain, uh, shoulder pain. Uh, and because it can cause so many issues, uh, insurance companies most of the time will cover a, uh, a medical breast reduction. There are certain criteria that you have to meet. There are photographs and certain BMIs uh, and body surface area testing that we need to do. Uh, but usually when, uh, when all of that checks out, the insurance companies uh, are pretty good about saying, you know, it will be covered. And honestly, it's one of the most rewarding procedures I do. I uh, see patients directly in the PACU or right after anesthesia, and instantly they feel better. Their shoulders have relaxed, they drop, they get to, you know, their neck feels better, they, they get to push their chest out a little bit, which they haven't been doing for, for many, many years. So that's one aspect, that's macromastia. Kind of on the opposite spectrum, we start talking about micromastia. Uh, those are women who uh, are concerned about the small size of their breasts. Uh, typically, that's more of a cosmetic procedure. Um, insurance companies haven't, um, haven't taken off on as far as paying for that yet. Uh, so that is an out-of-pocket expense for most patients. However, there's great technology as far as implants. Um, we talk about silicone implants, saline implants, and a variety of things that uh, can make a woman really feel you know, like she can look good in clothes and, and feel better about herself. So it's, it's rewarding. I love breast surgery. It's something that uh, I really enjoy doing. Uh, recovery time for uh, breast reduction is a little bit more than a breast augmentation. Uh, when you start talking about a breast reduction, um, there are a lot more incisions. Uh, when we talk about recovery time, you know, time off of work, not that much at all. You know, when it's breast surgery, uh, usually you can cover it up with clothes and, and go about your day. Uh, most of the time, we say anywhere from about four to six weeks uh, of total recovery time. Uh, you'll come back and see me in a week and we'll start talking about your incisions. Uh, sometimes with, with very large breast reductions, uh, patients will stay a night in the hospital with me, uh, but usually about four to six weeks and they're just fine. Uh, as far as breast augmentation goes, um, the, uh, the surgery itself, once you're done with it, uh, it's about a few days. Um, and again, like I said, it's breast surgery, so um, most of the time it's covered up and, and you can go to work and go about your day. Most of the time we put breast implants underneath the muscle, so there's a, there is a little bit of muscle soreness, uh, but most women are able to come past that in about a week or so. Uh, when we talk about macromastia, when we talk about um, having large breasts that uh, need a breast reduction, uh, that's a long procedure. Um, it's a procedure that uh, we can do in our outpatient surgery center, but most of the time we do it in a hospital. Uh, and it's about a four or five hour procedure, depending on how large the breast is uh, and how dense the breast is. Um, so the level of anesthesia, that's a, a general anesthetic, um, and uh, like I said, it takes us about four or five hours to do. Uh, when you do a breast augmentation, uh, most of the time that is also a general anesthetic, but it's a lot shorter of a procedure. Typically it takes us about an hour to do, uh, and both of those um, are typically in and out procedures. Um, you come in and you go the home the same day. Again, like I said, there are some breast reductions that uh, stay in the hospital with me overnight, and uh, then we go from there. The, the best thing to do is to know your body. Uh, and I talk about this when we talk about self-breast exams. Uh, and just knowing that those procedures exist, uh, you can talk to your primary care physician who can, who can refer, uh, you know, refer you to someone like me uh, who takes care of all of it. Uh, I like to pride myself on if, if you have a breast concern, I can take care of it whether it's from the malignant, um, even as, as early as just diagnosing and, and doing a biopsy, to all the way through breast reconstruction, I'm kind of your quarterback on your team. Uh, same thing with if you're concerned about the small size of your breasts or the large size of your breasts. 
uh, I can um, take care of you kind of from diagnosis all the way through. Honestly, Toledo Clinic is one of the, the best institutions I've been in. I've been around the country. Um, I've been, uh, you know, I did my training at the Cleveland Clinic and was in practice down in Atlanta for two years. Uh, the people here care. Uh, it's not just a business. It's not just a bringing patients in and sending them home. Uh, my, my staff talks about patients from 10 years ago. They really become part of the family. And so it's the family-oriented atmosphere that I really love about Toledo Clinic.